Hey, friend, no, Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw Matt Chat. <laughs> you are such a jerk. I'm not. I would not do that. Intentionally. I wouldn't do Accidents it. happen. I, uh, I am far less clumsy than you. You know that, right? Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, we might have to replace our cam link thing because you are more clumsy than me. That is a shoot. Um, this is the Going In Raw debate there show like, called Matt Chat. There was like a, a, a distance about that much between cable and floor. You don't, look, you don't look where you're going half the time. You're more clumsy than I am. That's a fact. Um, anyways, this is the, the debate show. Larson, the wrestling debate show. Our patrons send us videos and uh, we answer their debate topics. So today, Clemo over here and myself, we're going to do that at the $20 Patreon mark. Not only do you get the Friendo Care package, but you yourself can also be right here on the Matt Chat program. <sighs> exciting, isn't it? Very exciting. I'm sleepy. Oh my God. God, clumsy and perpetually fatigued. Well, maybe that's why I'm so clumsy because I'm tired all the time. <laughs> that could be. That could be that could like I physically can't lift my feet above oh more than a quarter gosh. an inch above the ground. Because Weight I'm of the world. So fatigued. The weight of the world on I your mean, shoulders. I mean, working with you on a daily basis to sap some, Really? Like, I love working with you. The life force it's from a, within me. It's a joy working with you. Best friend. It's a joy working with me too. <laughs> I kid. I kid. Why don't you just load up the first question? I think it's from A.O. Worm. It is from A.O. Worm. This is question of the week. We're kicking things off with question of the week. <laughs> you got so excited that you get to do this thumbnail. Oh, yeah. It's going to be good. All right. Here we go. Let's see what A.O. Worm has to say. Hey, what's going on? A.O. Worm back with another Matt Chat debate. All right, Steve Larson. You guys are seriously going to take the DDP route at your age and go full force into becoming actual wrestlers. Which developmental program would you want to be a part of? Would you be part of WWE's Performance Center, Ring of Honor's Future of Honor program, or would you want to go to Japan and be Young Lions? I feel like Larson, I already know your answer, but I want to hear your reasons why you would go to there and why you wouldn't go to the other two. All right, guys, take it easy. Thank you, A.O. Worm. Thank you, A.O. Worm. I really appreciate that usually uh, our good friend A.O. Worm is usually he's on the base, the military base that he's at. He's on the move. Sometimes in his car, too. Yeah, doing in his car. He's always doing something. Not this week. This week, chill. He's relaxing. He's relaxing. Uh, another great perk about the, uh, the the Patreon, at just $1 a month, you could be part of the Going In Raw Discord. A.O. Worm is one of the, the head honchos there. So uh, good people, good group. Yes. Check it out. Yes. But let's get to his question. Larson, <clears throat> I'll go first. <clears throat> My answer is... Uh, I would go to the school of Virgil Flynn, the third productions. All right, that's a good answer. Uh, and the reason why is because uh, one of, I think one of the trainers there, or at, I saw him bossing around a bunch of Virgil Flynn, the third young lions uh, as they were uh, bringing down, bringing up the ring ropes uh, at this last show we went to. And Adam Mann was just treating him like absolute crap. That's why I would not go to Virgil Flynn, the third. I'm sure it's a fantastic school. Their prospects seem Top notch over there, yes. but Adam Mayhem will never tell me what to do, <laughs> and therefore I'm going to pick NXT. That's right. They're going to come to me. I'm not going to go to them. They're going to say, hey, kid, wow, what, what a great prospect this Steve here is. And then, uh, you know, Mark Carano or whoever is going to be like, oh, man, is he coming from the UFC? No. Is he coming from football? No. no he's a podcaster. <laughs> he's a podcaster. Great mind for the business. Sits on his couch a lot. I'm sure we'll whip him into shape. Great mind for the business. How many times would you vomit the first day of training? <laughs> I mean, eventually it's just going to be like dry heaving. So a lot. Um, it's like me and my bachelor party, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Out in the in, in the ocean. Deep sea fishing. <laughs> yeah, that's what it's going to be like. Man, I'm never going fishing again. I'm never going deep sea fishing again. I've gathered that. Yeah, never again. Because I did it. Yours wasn't even the worst. Yeah, you know, the other time you did it, it didn't <laughs> sound like a whole lot of fun either. The worst. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, I, it'd be NXT. Look at NXT churning out talent. Granted, their actual developmental system, you know, they they brought up uh, authors of pain. They're native to the uh, developmental system. Bray Wyatt. Uh, Bray Wyatt. Did he do any indie stuff before? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I don't know. I know Velveteen Dream did some indie stuff a little bit before. Um, so you know, the vast majority of people coming through NXT now, of course, are coming from the indie scene. But, you know, I, I, I have faith that the, there's going to be some solid developmental people coming. That's going to be me, too. Steve here. I'm definitely developmental. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where would you go to, Larson? New Japan Dojo. 
Oh, Call man. me Young Larson. I'm going to be Young Lion, Steve. Oh, you're the oldest Young Lion. Doesn't there matter. Is. Look at this untapped potential right here. A big. I'm working on my Balor bod right now. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a shoe in for, uh, for Best of Super Juniors 2023. <laughs> best of Super Elders. I know. <laughs> If, no, if nothing else, I want to be a young lion for one reason and one reason alone. Oh, get kicked in the face by Minoru Suzuki. I don't that's know. Great honor, man. I feel like. I feel like that'd be fantastic to be in that situation, <laughs> to get quick, square in the feed hole yeah. by the legend Minoru Suzuki. That alone is reason enough that I want to train with New Japan. Here's the thing, too. It's like I got to be in Japan for, what, three years? That's the program, I think. Yeah. I got to go. I got to go visit uh, the country mm -hmm. traveling with a bunch of great wrestlers true learn a lot about the industry true yeah learn how to wrestle yeah um yeah i gotta like carry bags and clean stuff mm -hmm. but that's fine yeah um it, it, it's a it's a good deal if you if, if you can if you can you know go through the whole three years make it through the program go on your excursion they'll probably send me the cmll to hone <laughs> my craft is is best of the super elders <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back five years after I enrolled. <laughs> when ready, you're, near, when you're nearing retirement age. Ready to retire Will Ospreay and carry that, that junior <laughs> title until I retire in about six yeah. months. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the wear and tear on my 40-something-year-old body. They'll create a never-open-age belt for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be good. I'd like to say, I think Minoru Suzuki, yeah, something tells me he would single you out even more than the oh, others. He, he might consider retirement until he sees me <laughs> enroll in the Young Lion program. I'm mean, like, no, I'm sticking around until this guy. <laughs> this guy's ringside. This is like a kick him square uh, in the jaw on a nightly that, basis. That face, and dude. I would enjoy every second yeah, of it. I, think, I, I don't think you would, but... It's Minoru Suzuki, man. Yeah. He's a legend. It might sour you on him pretty quick. Nah. What a great question. No, I hear uh, Kaze Ninare and I get hype. Yeah. No, you'd start getting, you'd start busting out in fits no at way, that point. Man. No like, way, man. <laughs> Where no is way. he? Where is he? No. No. All right. Well, good luck with that. I mean, you just go down to LA, man. It's pretty close. You know? Yeah, but I might get kicked in the face, but Minoru Suzuki in LA. Well, you got to start somewhere, man. Do you think you'd make the cut of people they'd want to keep? I've never wrestled before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. I'm not that sharp these days either. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk to Minnesota Joe. He's got a question. Uh, speaking of New Japan, he's got a question about New Japan. Hey, friendos. Minnesota Joe here with another Matt Chat question. Okay, so I'm wearing my Kenny Omega shirt, my Bullet Club hat, because I learned we're going to have Kenny Omega versus Okada number four, and I am so excited for that match. I think that's potential for best match of all time. So... I want you guys uh, to debate who should go over. Should this be the moment Kenny finally beats Okada, or should we have Okada's reign just continue on and never end? I don't know what, which one I'd rather see, because both options are awesome. Thanks, friendos. Too sweet and a hearty handshake. Thank you, Minnesota Joe. Thank you, Minnesota Joe. Bullet Club Joe. I've never seen somebody so decked out in Bullet Club gear since Adam Cole. Do you remember Adam Cole? Yeah. He was just head to toe. Like Bullet Club. Captain Bullet Club, basically. Yeah, pretty That's much. Minnesota Joe's trying to take that that uh, gimmick over. Um, anyways, you go first. Uh, yeah, so who, we got a got? massive main event at Dominion coming yeah. up on June 9th. Yep. Uh, Kenny Omega versus Kazuchika Okada. Best two out of three falls. No time limit. Now is the time mm. for Kenny Omega mm. to capture the top prize in all of New Japan Pro Wrestling, winning the IWG World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, Okada, he's broken all the records. Um, the longest reign, most successful or most successful title defenses. Um, arguably, there's nothing left for him to do as champion. Um, the only reason to keep the belt on him is because Gato has some story in mind that may culminate at Wrestle Kingdom. Um, but considering that Okada has accomplished pretty much all there is to do in terms of establishing himself as greatest IWGP heavyweight champion of all time, because he's done that, um, let's advance... Uh, uh, the story of that world title. Let's give Omega, Kenny Omega, his chance. Um, these th two guys already put on three of the greatest wrestling matches in wrestling history. I have little doubt that this match, with the stipulations, can uh, compete with those three other matches for that claim. Um, and here's another aspect of it that I think would be beneficial. 
if Omega wins this title. Um, it would kind of be the inverse of the Golden Lovers story, how it played out before, where they came in to New Japan as a tag team, and it was Kota Ibushi who started um, going after solo success apart from the team. Well, now, even though they've been established for a few months as a tag team, Kenny made the uh, the claim that they are the greatest tag team in the world, and it seemed like with their defeat of Young Bucks at, a, a, what was that show called? Strong Style Evolved. Mm-hmm. They may have uh, solidified their place there. Um, but if Omega were to win this belt, it may cause some issues between the Golden Lovers, set that story in a different direction, hopefully culminating in a match between Kota Ibushi and Kenny Omega for uh, the IWGP, IWGP heavyweight title. Um, and I think that would be fantastic. That's got greatest match of all time possibility right there. Um, so I think that story doesn't necessarily need the title. But if it's, they're going to try to mirror the story of the Golden Lovers before, it kind of necessitates the t- a title at least being involved. We all want to see that match. We want to see Kota versus Kenny, especially if Kenny has any designs on going to WWE within the next couple of years. We need to see this, this match happen. It would help if it was motivated by championships. Kenny Omega picks up the win. All right. I think you're wrong, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> Something tells me, and granted, you know, we watch New Japan when we can. We're definitely going to check out Dominion. We keep up on it. Um, So I think over the past year and a half or so, we have a generally good idea about what the landscape is. I get this idea that Gato is looking at Okada as a truly long term, uh, as a true long term storytelling. possibility opportunity and I feel like we're still only in act two of Okada's three act uh, story I don't think anybody has realistically and I know he's been beaten he was beaten in the in the G1 yeah, tournament Kenny beat him, yeah Kenny, Kenny beat and, him there yeah, I think evil beat him too and I understand that like he has been beaten but in terms of Okada as champion Gato, and maybe this is writing himself into a hole, and maybe this is, maybe it's not the best way to go about things. But I, I have tons of confidence in his in his storytelling and writing abilities. I just feel like nobody, nobody right now, and especially in terms of the storytelling stuff, nobody is the heir apparent to Okada. Nobody is qualified to to end his reign and i think that they're going to start building up either naito or maybe kenny after he's done with the golden lover stuff i feel like they're going to start building somebody up so that it makes sense we all thought it was naito at wrestle kingdom but it made more sense the way they the way it actually went down with the okada reborn idea well then naito showing hints that he was still kind of stuck to his past exactly and so that to me would be the logical thing but that could take, even from where we are right now, another year to come to pass. I could see Naito taking the title off Okada maybe at next Dominion. If if at this Dominion, Jericho takes the Intercontinental Championship off Naito and Naito kind of sticks to his old ways and that's the catalyst for, man, you know, this time last year I was unbeatable with that IC title. I have it for a month in this, or two months and this guy takes it off me. Maybe I do need to start looking to the future and building up Naito Reborn, and then we'll have Naito Reborn, Okada Reborn at next year's Dominion, or even at maybe at Wrestle Kingdom down the line, but I still feel like that's too soon. I feel like his, Okada's reign is so strong right now that it's going to take a long-term story of Naito or Omega or somebody being built up, and in parallel with that, Okada becoming more of a product of himself. We saw this with the Tanahashi thing where he was starting to show some heel side to his personality. Yeah, some arrogance. Some arrogance. So we're going to need a lot more of that. We're going to need a really strong build on the other side for whoever's going to take it off him. I have a lot of confidence and a lot of faith that they'll be able to pull that story off, and it's going to be the biggest thing ever. But I still think that we're still a year, maybe even two years away from that. And if Gato wants to get completely crazy with it, he might want to try to break Bruno's record. If 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 it's going the way it's going right now, that'd be pretty spectacular, and I think that it, it could happen. 
It's a long time from it now. It is a long That's time. It's like another six years. Yeah. So Okada just turned thirty. Yeah, and he's he's a young dude. He is young. And and they use him they use him properly, mm-hmm. you know. Hopefully they learn their lesson. No more headbutts. Yeah. Uh, next up, oh, speaking of Virgil Flynn, the third production's superstars, Adam Mayhem. Let's see what he has to say. Buenas tardes, Fernando University. Bienvenidos to another edition of Chit Chat with the champ who decided to play hooky and not go to school because hot damn is beautiful outside. Anyway, Stephen Larson, here's my debate. I want you guys to debate in kayfabe why is it that wwe always does the same thing with superstars meaning for example ruby riot comes to raw beats sasha beats bailey at the pay-per-view and then they put her in the triple threat and she takes the pin so they kind of are forgetting to like push people or they're not going all in (laughs) so I want you guys to debate why is it that WWE is not going all in on their superstars and their pushes. All right, guys, take it easy. Thank you, Adam Mayhem. Thank you, Adam Mayhem. Another poorly thought out question. I'm joking. I'm so joking. I love Adam Mayhem. He's, He's got a great. cute little dog and everything. Yes. He's the best. And anyway, he was yelling at those those poor kids, those poor students, man. Oof, man. Iron fist that guy. Anyways. Well, um, he is. He does play heel, so. I know, but he's so nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, um, so if I get the gist of his question, it's uh, WWE. Uh, he feels the WWE kind of has a 50-50 booking type situation on their hands. Um, why aren't they going all in on somebody, for example, like Ruby Riot? Um, <clears throat> well, he mentions because she got a couple wins over high-profile competition, Sasha and Bailey, And then <clears throat> it comes. So it seems like she was in the midst of a push this past week um, during the qualifying match. She didn't pick up the win. Ember Moon did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of in the, especially in the in the Raw Women's Division. Um, I'm trying to think about this in the in the SmackDown Women's Division too, but especially with the Ruby Riot and the Riot Squad, they're really kind of careful not to push them too hard. Um, and I don't know exactly what that is. They it seems like they have something going on for Sasha and Bailey, but then another part of me just thinks that I don't know. They're just sort of playing it week to week with them and and doing whatever. That's the thing. Yeah, there's no vision. Yeah. No laid out vision. They might have an idea. Well, you we want this to happen at this show, but there's no steps put in place to ensure the story's built up so it's effective by the time that match takes place. That's what I think largely what it is. Is the show is written on a week to week basis. Yeah. So if if they think Ruby Riot in the the matter of the matches between Sasha and Bailey can facilitate the uh, the the advancement of that story in some way, Sasha and Bailey, mm-hmm. then she will do so by picking up wins, but putting a match on her own. You know, against Sasha and Ember Moon, um, where a win or loss for her is, is you know up to her own devices and play into a larger story, then mm-hmm. they're fine having her take the pin and have Ember Moon win. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it seems like whatever their A story is, especially if it's Roman Reigns, everything else basically in the company exists to facilitate what they want to do with that story. Yeah. Um, regardless, and so while you might see some people string a couple wins uh, together in a row, and then they lose for five weeks in a row, and you're like, "What the heck's going on?" It seemed like they were getting behind this particular wrestler, and then it went nowhere. I just feel like it's because, well, they have their one or two top stories per division, mm-hmm. and people, everybody else is there to play a role on telling those stories. And while it might seem like while doing so, they may be in line for something. Once they're taken out of that story, it's kind of back to the status quo. Yeah, it's. I mean. Uh, it's kind of why <clears throat> I'm trying to think of like some of the top guys. When I think of like Seth Rollins, when I think of Daniel Bryan, when I think of AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura. A lot of these guys, they're not helped by story. And I feel like that's a major issue because you could be building people up via story. Okay, so Seth Rollins, why is Seth Rollins so great? Because he's the best wrestler. Best wrestler, tons of charisma. Yeah. AJ Styles, by far, best wrestler. Tons Shinsuke Nakamura, legacy, tons, 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 of tons of charisma. Tons of charisma. Still wrestler. a really good wrestler. Daniel Bryan, all the charisma, best wrestler on the planet, right? Yeah. All those guys are not really being helped by story. Well, here's the thing I kind of realized. I, mean, I don't know why it took me so long to realize this. It kind of dawned on me on a macro level the other day, well, considering, I think after Backlash especially, it's 
WWE main roster, at times, they handle storylines all right. They don't handle character well at all. One of the standout programs of the last couple of years was Jericho Kevin Owens. Yeah. Why did it stand out? Character. Because it handled, it handled character and story mm-hmm. very, very well. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Jimmy Jacobs had a lot to do with that. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> and, of course, he's gone now. He's with Impact. Um, we've heard good things about Ryan Ward. I mean, we don't know the back. I mean, we don't know exactly what goes into who's writing what, what's going on. But it does feel like, especially lately, like you say, lack of vision is this great umbrella that we can use to, to analyze a couple different problems with what's going on. But it's like, especially with the Roman stuff, he – there's zero idea of what story they want to well, tell because to get they have the no idea what his character is. Mm-hmm. Zero idea what his character is. There's a handful of, of people on Raw and SmackDown. You can say definitively what their character is. Like when they tried when they tried to put AJ and Kevin Owens into a story, it ended up being to the detriment of what should have been a feud that essentially writes itself. Mm-hmm. You know, AJ and Kevin Owens are two spectacular wrestlers. Everybody loves AJ. Kevin Owens is a great heel. It, it, it writes itself. It yes. really does. And they're two phenomenal wrestlers. It should be five-star matches and, and instead, intriguing stuff. It was, it was a vehicle yeah. to, to enhance the storyline between Kevin Owens and Shane. Yeah. And in the meantime, the matches that we got all had wonky finishes. Mm-hmm. And it was like, okay, well, there's no true resolution there. You have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn on SmackDown, and their story was Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan, and then Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan's story was just this morass. Of, mm-hmm. It was just... Well, the week to week, we didn't know what Daniel Bryan's character was. Yeah, yeah, that was like, yeah. That was a huge that part. And also, example, yeah. Shane, we didn't know, is someone going to turn heel? What the heck is going on with between these two guys? Because week to week, the character work was so all over the place. Yeah. You know? And it's like if they have a clear vision of who everybody's character is, uh-huh. and then storylines should rise from the motivation of those characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead, I feel, I feel like they they say, okay, this is the story we want to tell. How can we mold these characters to fit the story we want to tell? And you look at NXT, and that's the stark difference right there, yeah. is that you have, look at their best stories lately. Alistair Black and Velveteen Dream. Where did their story rise out of? Character. Character, exactly. Gargano Ciampa, where did Character. their story? Exactly. So you get the point. Shayna Baszler right now. Character. Exactly. So, yeah, and, and we've heard wrestlers talk about that. We've heard Sasha Banks talk about yeah. that. You know, that when she was in NXT, there was a solid plan there. And when she got to main roster, it's just week to week, they show up, and here, this is what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it, that's a big issue. That's a big problem. And I, I to me, that's number one. That's if we were to do a count out or a power rank in terms of what needs to – change on the main roster went once Vince is gone it's Triple H needs he needs to adopt the philosophy that he takes with NXT yeah and write 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 who are these people what are their characters what stories can we get out what of are those? their motivations what are the what are the most compelling stories we can get yes. from those motivations yes uh, next up, we have a question from, ooh, he wants to do some time traveling, alternate history. Whoa. T- Debut Matt Chatter here. TNA for life. Let's see what he has to say. What's up, friendos? I am TNA for life. And I'm a new $20 Patreon here for going in raw. Steven Larson, been a fan for you guys about two years now, watching you guys every day. You guys kill it. Keep on doing your thing. So my question is, if you can go back to 2015, would you change the results of the match between Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan to have Daniel go over Roman Reigns and have him fight Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31 instead of Roman? I personally would have, even though you know we know that Seth cashed in and then you know what happened after with Daniel Bryan. I would still have Daniel Bryan go over instead. I just think it would have been a better match. Um, I think you know it would have been. Better to have Seth go over as a heel that way too. He's got he's you know he's getting more heel heat by doing that because he's preventing Daniel Bryan from winning the title. I think it would have just all around been a better situation. So I would love to know what you guys think. You guys could pick your sides on this one. Thank you very much. Once again, I am TNA for for life. Too sweet, hearty handshake. Peace out. Thank you, TNA for life. Thank you. Uh, so uh, can if can I if I can time travel for a moment, you know I love you love um, yourself some time travel. I love myself some time travel. Yes, absolutely. I'll tell you why I would love to send Daniel Bryan back to fill that Roman Reigns spot at WrestleMania 31. Simply, you've described this before. We were there in attendance, and all we could think leading to that main event, and when that main event was underway, was 
Uh, how can we have it so it's not Brock or Roman that has that title? And then Seth came down and it was amazing. It was damn near euphoric. Exactly. Now paint this picture because there's any number of ways you can tell this story. Uh, originally when uh, Daniel Bryan was supposed to fight Brock Lesnar um, at SummerSlam, I think the year that he got injured. Yeah, the John Cena took that spot Right, exactly, yeah. And got destroyed by Brock. Yes. Brock was supposed to absolutely annihilate Daniel Bryan, take the title off him, and then go on and whatever. Um, so Lose if, Roman Reigns, that's what's supposed to happen. Yeah, exactly. So if that same scenario played out, Brock is destroying Daniel Bryan, Brock is destroying Daniel Bryan, um, <clears throat> then, I mean, would Seth, if Seth cashing in at that point, would that still have been... Would we then see Seth, oh, my God, he's going to save Daniel Bryan from or save us from a Brock Lesnar, a Brock Lesnar title reign at that like another like a, a, a continued. A, yes, a continued Brock Lesnar title reign. Will we see that. Um, I think the bottom line for me is I, I think Daniel Bryan is a much more compelling character than Roman Reigns. And so if you swap out Roman Reigns, put Daniel Bryan, we would have had a better build, better story told in the match. Seth Rollins would have come out, probably got more heat on him. If Daniel Bryan was about to eke out a victory, perhaps, um, would that have would that have just put nuclear heat on Seth for robbing that robbing Daniel Bryan? Um, just because I find Daniel Bryan a much more compelling character, I'm a big Daniel Bryan fan. Yes, I absolutely would time travel, put him back there with Brock. Absolutely, no. Yes, no, no. Sure. I wouldn't have done that. Exactly. Here's first of all, I think if it was Daniel Bryan versus Brock WrestleMania uh, main event WrestleMania 31, we would not have seen a cash in. I don't think it would have seen it. I think the, the, the sole reason Seth cashed in that night was to save uh, face for the WWE for the entire crowd crapping on the results of that main event when Roman Reigns won. Yeah, I agree with that completely. I'm just saying if you swap them out and they still decided to go with the cash in, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to see Brock just completely annihilate Daniel Bryan and then walk away smiling in purple with that no, stupid that championship. Anyway. That would have been terrible. Yeah, it would have been terrible. Um, secondly... Um, I understand your point about that heat on Seth Rollins. However, that would have deprived us of one of our, mm -hmm. if not our favorite live wrestling experiences ever. Yeah. And I'm not willing to say, I'll give that up. Yeah, I know. He was our savior in that moment. I know. And, I know. and in knowing full well, you know, even within storyline, here's a heel, even that point, kind of a cowardly heel coming out and saving us all from a Roman Reigns title reign. Mm -hmm. I mean, like 70,000 people popped for the top heel or secondary heel in the company. Mm -hmm. That hardly ever happens. I know. And we got that moment, and I'm not gonna deprive myself of that in hindsight. Um, also, another thing we need to consider is Daniel Bryan was coming off neck, uh, neck surgery. <laughs> oh, yeah. They weren't gonna put him in that situation against Brock Lesnar, no, even, uh, even if they wanted to. I know. Um, I think he, uh, Daniel Bryan probably needed that time in uh, the mid-card with the Intercontinental title. Just to kind of hold on a second. Hold on, though. let me finish. He's still in a ladder match. I know. I'm not saying a that. Pretty brutal I'm one. Just to kind of work his way back into the mix of things. Nah, man. I love Daniel Bryan. I own a Daniel Bryan shirt. He was one of my favorites ever. But uh, I, I, in hindsight, I'm fine with how history played out, um, and I'm I'm not willing to change it because it would deprive me of a great moment. <laughs> well, you know what? When I go back and change history, you won't even know because that's how time travel works. It'll just disappear for you, and you'll be like, wow, it was crazy when we were there at WrestleMania no, I'm 30. Hide Daniel some, Bryan. I'm going to hide the, you can't uh, do anything. a vlog in your pocket on my on a phone or something, and I'm going to... You're going to hide uh, a vlog in my pocket? Yeah, I'm going to hide a vlog in your pocket on a phone or something, some futuristic <laughs> recording device, Okay, and wa and past me is going to watch it and realize what happened. Oh, but you're going to just go crazy, because like, I don't even think... I don't know. My head is already hurting from the possibility. I'll probably just there. hit you a lot because I, I'd say, why would you deprive us of this moment of Seth Rollins? You wouldn't have known. In? Let's talk to Vinny Elliott. He's got a question for us, so let's see what it is. Hey, friendos. Vinny Elliott here. I saw a tweet the other day. Um, someone was saying that the Miz should win money in the bank and cash in on Daniel Bryant that night he wins the championship, like on a big pay-per-view or something like that. What would be a better story, in your opinion? Um, the Miz catching on Daniel Bryant that night, or pick anything else. I have no idea, but that, to me, is the best story going ahead. Take care, friendos. Thank you, Vinny. Thank you, champion. Oh, I get to go first. Former champion. No, I think that's, that, that scenario uh, laid out by Vinny and whoever posted on Twitter is fine. Mm -hmm. um, for me, first of all, for me, Top story idea is my story idea. Nakamura wins Money in the Bank. 
low blow, cashes in on AJ, uh, wins the title that way. For me, that's number one story that I want to see coming out of Money in the Bank. I know it's not going to happen. So let's assume Miz wins Money in the Bank. Daniel Bryan at Survivor Series wins the title. Something like that. Um, yeah, it would make all the sense in the world for the Miz to cash in on him and, and, and rob Daniel Bryan of a, a, a title reign. But here's an alternative. I'll give you two. One, Miz, with briefcase, torments Daniel Bryan for months. Um, teasing cash-ins, driving Daniel Bryan insane, constantly teasing and prodding and, 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 and just driving him basically insane with the prospect being cashed in on before maybe, I don't know, like uh, the lead to Mania says, here, this is what we'll do. I'm going to cash this in at WrestleMania. You and I, the few people that people have been longing to see for basically two years, we're going to throw down at Mania and we're going to do it there. That's how you do actually combine two different stories into the one. So that's how you do it. That's good. Good job. Um, <clears throat> does this presuppose Daniel Bryan winning the title at Money in the Bank? No, just h him winning the title at some juncture. Oh, okay. And then uh, the moment of his victory, Miz cashes in. No, I like that because it's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. It is absolute, absolutely heartbreaking. I like, I like the idea. I think, it, I think it'd be great because it would be once again for Daniel Bryan. He sniffs it. He gets that moment of glory. We've seen this before with Randy Orton. He did that to Daniel Bryan. He did. When he cashed in. He did. With the help of the game. And then. Pedigree, uh, golden shuffle. Pedigree. Pedigree, golden shuffle. Right. Um, so we saw it there. We saw it even when he won, uh, won the title back at uh, WrestleMania. You know, we still saw it was a really, really short lived because of his injury. It was a really short lived title reign. His Intercontinental Championship reign, really short lived. And so once again, you know, he wins it and he gets cashed in by that son of a bitch, The Miz, and he loses it. And then uh, he wins, uh, I don't know, the Royal Rumble or something in order to say, Miz, you and I are going to be in the match before the Roman Reigns match. So, you know, the, not the main event, but the match before that, because yeah. that's where those matches go now. They go before whatever Roman Reigns match is on last on the show. Ridiculous. Like the whole company is just being held up by Roman Reigns. I know. It's crazy. They're mortgaging their entire future on one wrestler who Absolutely can't, crazy. They can't but get here, over. Here's the bigger point, though. When Randy Orton did that to Daniel Bryan. It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. And on top of that, it made his Mania 30, uh, his Mania 30 win all the more satisfying. Yeah. Because at that point, it was like, oh, finally. So, yeah, absolutely. I think it'd be a great idea. All right. Vinny Elliott, you and I are on the same page. All right. Thayer Thabat is up next with a record-breaking Yeah, shortest five. question. I think it might be the shortest possible question anybody can ask. All right. Let's well, check it out. Let's do it. Who's more underappreciated by WWE, Becky Lynch or Rusev? Wow. Thank you, Thayer Thabata. Record-breaking Thayer Thabata. Who's more underappreciated by WWE? Oh, pff, are you kidding me? It's Becky Lynch. Give me a break. This past SmackDown, what do we see? Rusev beating Daniel Bryan cleanly in the main event. That's not. I don't see Becky Lynch doing that anytime soon. Well, they don't have intergender wrestling, so she can't beat Daniel Bryan. But I don't see, she just lost to Mandy Rose. Yeah, no, that was via weird. roll up. That was weird. There, I don't even think there's an. I mean, you can try to make an argument here, but I don't think there's an argument. It's Becky Lynch. She's supremely over, has been for decades, and yet they always treat her as the fourth member of the four horsewomen. They're not even giving her a heel turn or anything like that. Come on, man, it's Becky Lynch. Absolutely. Yeah, you're pretty much right. However, let's take this week out of the equation. Let's assume Thereth the Bot actually recorded this question a week ago. Forgot to submit it, submit it this week. It, the answer would be the same. I don't know, because by all indications, Rusev was selling a ton of merch, has the crowd behind him, one of the most over wrestlers in the entire company. You're, yet we hear reports that they want to break him and Aiden English up because they just, someone in, in WB executive branch or multiple people see them as a, 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 a mid-card tag team, a losing tag team. Mm. Get out of here with that. Rusev is money, and Aiden English has helped him get to this point. Without Aiden English singing the Rusev Day song, who knows if Rusev Day would be as popular as it is right now? It wouldn't be, would it? Yeah, no. No. It be. no. Even going back to like his U.S. title reign, Rusev's second U.S. title reign really put that belt back on the map. You know, that feud with Roman Reigns. They put the belt on Roman Reigns as his punishment, <laughs> which is kind of lame. Yeah. But Rusev, especially his second U.S. title reign, because... I, I don't remember exactly who was carrying it beforehand, but he got his hands back on it, and he brought some prominence back to that title. 
He dropped at the reins, and then he was doing nothing for a while. Yeah, but they trust him to have the U.S. title. They trust him to do any number of things, regardless of... of, of what do we think he was going to be for, the, for a while? Released? He, well, no. <laughs> like, involved in celebrity matches and stuff. Which is way more than Becky Lynch gets. That's the comparison we're doing here. Becky Lynch is treated like Ty Dillinger. Give me a break. Well, not quite. She's on TV all the time. She's on TV all the time. What's a better... What's Okay, I'll put it this way. No, I shouldn't put it that way. I can't put it that way. I'm trying to think of a men's division equivalent to Becky Lynch. I was about to say Finn Balor, but that would totally undercut my uh, my argument there. Um, I don't know. But she's not treated as well as Rusev is. He well, was, especially not now. Yeah, not now. And you have to include this week. Oh, I know. And I know Therathabod did record it this week because he said as much in uh, our, our chat today for our... SmackDown recap. Did Rusev have a backlash match? No. He didn't? I don't think so. Oh, they, they had the segment, the Elias segment. Yes. So he was on TV. She wasn't. Um, what was the pay-per-view before that? Greatest Royal Rumble. Was Rusev in that? I think he was in... Was he in the Greatest Royal Rumble? I think so. Okay. Make yeah, he was. was. She literally wasn't allowed to be on that show. Uh, WrestleMania. What did Rusev do there? I don't remember. It was yeah, me ago. neither. Was he in the New Japan Rumble? I, he might have been. <laughs> Becky Lynch was in uh, the WrestleMania Women's Rumble. Okay, well, there you go. Did she win it? No, but he didn't win his either. I don't know. Maybe they're, they're around the same level prior to this week. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe she'll get like a Becky Lynch holiday or something, and she can sell a lot of merch too. So, I don't know. I think that they have – I think that – yeah, I think they treat him a hell of a lot better than they treat her. Yeah, um, you're right. Moving on. Uh, another uh, new Matt Chatter, The Nate Show. Let's see what The Nate Show you has You can say, say this, though. You can say this, though. They at least did put her top division title. They did put the women's division title on Becky Lynch. Yeah. They did that. So they didn't really do that with Rusev. No. Although there is no mid-card belt. Uh, next up, who's this? The Nate Show? Nate Show. What a great name. Let's new see what Matt he, Chatter. Oh, new. Oh, I love the new ones. Uh, let's see what The Nate Show has to say. Hey friendos, the Nate Show here. This is my first time doing this. I actually snuck into the back at my job here to, to send y'all a Matt Chat question real quick. But I, I kind of wanted to know, do you think that there are too many or maybe even not enough or just the right amount uh, of uh, stables across wrestling? You know, I go into Hot Topic, I see you know, Bullet Club and Vigilante Club t-shirts. And granted, it's been a good way to kind of get me aware of what's going on uh, with New Japan. But I was just thinking across wrestling, there's that. And then, of course, there's Undisputed Era and NXT. Um, I don't really know really what's going on in impact but maybe you know if you want to do the whole debate uh format steve if you want to say that there are not enough stables and larson if you want to say there are too many uh, or however you want to do that but i just love an answer to my question on this been thinking about it a lot lately but uh keep up the good work thanks thank you the nate show thank you the nate show if he was on later in the show he would have been <clears throat> the nate nate show get it because that's what they call the late, late show say the late nate the show. late nate show anyways uh no yeah of course whose goes first you oh nice yeah, there's not enough stables in wrestling. All I have to do oh, wait, is... Oh, wait, no, I do. Okay. There's just the right number of stables in wrestling, Steve. Yeah. You don't want every promotion to have everybody in a stable. I like it that New Japan is very stable heavy. Oh, yeah, man. There's and only a so well. handful of competitors that are not in a stable. Yet, the stables aren't so rigid that you can't have, say, a match where chaos members take on each other. It happens on occasion. Rarely, but on occasion. Okay. Um, and WWE... They're, they don't really utilize stables maybe as much as what they should, but the stables they have are all generally pretty good. In NXT, you got Undisputed Era. Fantastic. Yeah, man. Mm, good I job. Right. Um, on the main roster, you got The New Day. Soon, Sanity over on SmackDown. Both excellent, excellent stables. Raw could use a strong stable. Don't really have one right now, but historically, you know, you have the authority. Um, most recently, I think, as a strong stable. Seth, Corporate Kane. Triple H, Stephanie, J&J Security. Yeah. That was a fun stable. Um, they didn't really utilize stables much since then. Uh, remember the League of Nations? That was great, huh? No, that was terrible. It was terrible, except for Rusev. Rusev was great. He was great. Yeah. He's always great, though. He's always great. Um, so it, it, there's just about the right number of stables. Give me one good one on Raw, 
and I'd be pretty content. Oh, man, we need more stables. Are you kidding me? Look at look at what they're doing in NXT. You got the Undisputed Era. Yeah, it's like the only stable, though, isn't oh, it? Oh, but it's great. It it's is great. fantastic. Absolutely. New Day is great on SmackDown. Yeah, New Day is fantastic. Uh, Sanity, they're coming. You know, they're fantastic. Yeah. Stables are a way of the future. Listen, we talk endlessly about there's so much talent coming up through NXT. We need stables in order to accommodate all this talent so they can all be on TV. Look, you don't see Kofi Kingston wrestling every week, Big E wrestling every week, but we always see them because they're coming out there with Xavier Woods, who does seem to be wrestling every single week, and they get their TV time. They're a stable. As long as the stables are executed properly, unlike the League of Nations, as long as they're executed properly, I think stables are a great thing. Play it, use the Undisputed Era as the perfect template right there. Play to their past. If they have, if wrestlers have a history with each other, play to that because then you're appealing to the hardcore fans. You're appealing to, uh, you know, the chemistry that those wrestlers will have. Um, so that's great. Or thematic stables like Sanity. They got those, those guys in NXT. What are they called? The uh, Fallen oh, Sons. Oh, Forgotten Sons. I'm always going to call them Fallen Sons. Um, and so, yeah, man, stables are great. Look at how well it works in New Japan because every single paper you get these 10 man tag matches are so great. I, mean, I say that with sarcasm. Yeah, I hate those 10 man tag matches. Tell. No, stables are fantastic, man. Are you kidding me? They're great. Anyways, next up uh, Joe Jensen. Let's see what Joe Jensen, double J, ain't he great? Joe Jensen, let's see what he has to say. Hey, Steven Larson. My question this week is a pretty easy one with all in coming up. I want to know, or I want you guys to debate, who's more over, Kenny Omega or the Young Bucks? Let me know. Two sweets all around, no handshakes this time. Thank you, Joe Jensen. Thank you, Joe Jensen. More bullet, bullet, bullet club for, for, for life questions. Um, it's the Young Bucks, man. The Young Bucks are supremely over right now. I know Kenny, everybody loves Kenny Omega, one of the top wrestlers in the world. Young Bucks are the best tag team on the planet right now. They are transcending tag team wrestling. They're now in the heavyweight division there in New Japan. It's going to be great. Just a matter of time before. I think, aren't they like the never three-man whatever thing now with Skrull? Yeah. Yeah. Six-man. Six-man, so they're that now. Um, it's the Young Bucks. Here's the thing. Look at any wrestling crowd, and it's like there's almost an equal number of like traditional Bullet Club shirts but then there's for every one of those, there's at least one or two Young Buck Bullet Club version shirts. They are at the forefront of this being the elite phenomenon. If it wasn't for them, there'd be none of these Funko Pops. There'd be no, uh, it probably wouldn't be in, there would not be an all in show because they're financing the damn thing with Cody. Um, no, man, they're the glue that keeps that version of the Bullet Club drama together. Um, and everybody knows it, it's the Bullet Clubs. It's the Young Bucks, rather. It's the Bullet Clubs. It's the Young Bucks. They're supremely over. Kenny Omega's great. He's really over, but it's the Young Bucks. Um, let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, if it was uh, for All In, if the main event was Young Bucks versus, I don't know, the Briscoes, that'd mm -hmm. be the main event at All In. Would they get close to selling out 10,000 seat venue? Well, it, the, against the Briscoes? No. Just pulling that out as an example. That's a terrible example. <laughs> well, <I'm> just, <laughs> not against, no, man. Um, but if it's Kenny Omega in the main event against Jay Briscoe, <laughs> there's a better chance it'll sell out. No, there isn't. A better chance there'll be no more people way. in the arena. No way, man. You put Kenny Omega in a main event, butts are going to be in the seats. The Bucks don't have any contemporaries. That's the problem. I know. They don't have contemporaries. Kenny well, Omega. The independent scene. No, no, absolutely. If it was the Bucks versus. Uh, if it was the Young Bucks versus New Day. It was the Young Bucks versus New Day. It was the Young Bucks versus the Hardys. Yeah. Uh, that could do it. Um, but right now they don't, and even like a year ago before the, or a year and a half ago before the, uh, Hardys came back to WWE, if that was the main event, that would do as well as, uh, Kenny versus Cody. Yeah. Let's say that. I think that's true. Um, but I, I see your point. It's just, they have far fewer, like I said, contemporaries. No, I understand that. Point. Um, anyways, you put Kenny in the main event, butts are going to be in seats. That's true. Um, any ring of honor show where Kenny is involved. They sell out. Yeah. They sell a heck of a lot more tickets. Look at the, the lines for Ring of Honor meet and greets. Who has the longest line? Kenny Omega. When we were at that uh, PWG show and everybody was in the ring selling t-shirts, who was selling the most shirts? 
Kenny Omega. Granted, it was all, you know, that was about a year ago or so. Um, uh, but I still think it holds true. Kenny Omega, there's, there's a level of, of buzz and hype around him still a year and a half after his first Wrestle, his Wrestle Kingdom match against Okada that very few wrestlers, especially not in WWE, have. The buzz is still there. It is. You know what's interesting, though? I you're, you're... So last Wrestle Kingdom, we, I think it was a Matt Chat question, or we used to talk about this every once in a while. Um, where you, I think, I think one of the Matt Chat questions back then was, should Kenny sign now or should he wait? And I think your position, and who knows, because we just sort of, you know, divvy these up either by what they want or by what we decide, um, was he should sign now because his buzz isn't going to be as much a year from now. Mm-hmm. That was your position. You're kind of right about that. Um, I'm not sure how well the Golden Lover storyline, and you told me this before cameras roll. Oh yeah, how well it's. I mean, I, it seems, because I agreed with you. It with seems this. incredibly popular in Japan. Yeah, but I don't know how well it's 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 if it's as popular here in the states. Granted, when we went to the Strong Style Evolve show. There were a lot of Golden Lover shirts. Yeah, sure, a yeah. lot. Yeah, I bought one. I, I have to again, like my Suzuki Goon shirt. I have to wash my Golden Lover shirt. Because I wash my shirt before I wear it. So yeah. I don't know. Do you do that too? Do I do what? You buy a shirt and you want to wash it before you wear it? Generally, yes. Yeah. Anyways. But I don't know if... if I mean, because that's the story. The Golden Lover story played out exclusively in Japan. And and so, you know, apart from watching, you know, like highlight mm-hmm, yeah. videos, which we've seen on, on YouTube and whatnot, um, and seeing some Twitter threads... You know, unless you just happen to be watching a lot of DDT Pro and New Japan in like 2010 through 2014, which we weren't, mm-hmm. we were not that uh, educated on their whole backstory. Now that I am, I'm really interested in the storyline, seeing where it plays out, as I you talked about in our answer for who should win between Okada and Omega this next time. But I don't know, I don't know how many people who are watching New Japan know that much about their story what's the least watch i'm about to make a really loose uh, uh, analogy here what's the least watched least popular marvel movie probably ant-man maybe i would think yeah it's as if ant-man played a massive role in infinity war which he doesn't he's not even in it right kota ibushi we both love oh he's great big he's, time he's he's one of my favorite wrestlers in the whole world but there's a pro- there's a couple problems with the golden lovers uh story in that here in this, you know, like you said, everything you just said, basically, people don't really know about all that stuff unless they endeavor to go find it, right? Whereas before, Kenny, and on top of that, Kenny's, like, happy now. He's coming out with, like, a super blonde hair, and he's super happy, and that's just not as cool as Kenny from when he was fighting Okada, and he had that, I mean, that super buzzworthy match mm-hmm. at Wrestle Kingdom. It was just the perfect storm of like cool and people were like all in on that stuff, you know? And there's a, will he, won't he go to the WWE? And then he, you know, he headlined, um, uh, the first long beach show won the U S title there. And it was huge and massive and huge. And then all this drama with the bullet club stuff started. And granted it's, it's very entertaining and it makes for good drama and tension and everything. But he, he lost a little bit of his cool. I think, well, he lost a bit of his buzz, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, he still puts on fantastic matches. Oh, yeah. and, and he's still, in terms of people who are into wrestling, a fairly household name. I mean, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his name is probably synonymous or it's on the same terms of the Young Bucks in terms of, like, you know, who knows. But, you know, I think the Young Bucks going up. And your point about Ring of Honor, the Young Bucks are, like, always in Ring of Honor. Yeah. And when Kenny shows up, it's a special thing. Yeah, exactly. I know. Um, but I do think they're a bit more over right now. Um, and I think largely it has to do with the fact that they're kind of the masterminds behind and nobody's ever had to really pick sides about the young bucks. You well, know? here's another thing about the young bucks is that not only are they one of the, the, the two of the people spearheading the, the all in show, which has kept them in the news cycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. They're also regularly interviewed. Yeah. Yeah. Like every, something like every two or three months, there's a feature on them somewhere. Yeah. Um, let's say Kenny is press shy cause he gives interviews and stuff, but he doesn't seem to be. Talking to Sports Illustrated or Rolling yeah. Stone or, and a lot of or people, Vice think, as often as the Young Bucks are. I think example. a lot of people understand, just have this general understanding that the Young Bucks are the reason behind this, you know, this being the elite, mm-hmm. you know, renaissance thing that we're seeing mm-hmm. with all the, you know, shirts and Funko Pops and the, and the series, of course, that the Young Bucks are behind it all for the most part. And then they just sort of bring in, because they're the ones who started doing it. They're the ones who film yeah, yeah, it yeah. and edit and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. 
And so they bring in everybody and they're kind of the masterminds behind it. And I think that gives them an edge in terms of like, man, there's something special mm-hmm. and we have them to thank for stuff. Yeah. So I think that's why. Uh, Patrick Sparks has an interesting question about money in the bank. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, friendos, Pat here. All right, money in the bank's coming up pretty soon. So I got a debate for you. What would be better? An NXT superstar being a surprise debut into the Money in the Bank match, say, maybe there's a build to it, maybe it's uh, revealed the night of Money in the Bank and they're put into the match. They win the match, proceed to cash in whenever to win the WWE or Universal Championship. Or would maybe NXT uh, adopt the idea of Money in the Bank, maybe downright, and just take it and use it or adapt it a little make it different but still the same concept and the person who wins that doesn't cash in in nxt but they make their main roster debut by cashing it in on the main roster what do you guys think thanks friendos bye thank you patrick thank you patrick i'm really disappointed patrick doesn't have his bees with him anymore i think they left him is it it really added a lot to the show are we not in b season anymore uh, you know what? They said, we're, be seeing you. Yeah, we're heading out of spring towards summer, so we might be. Flowers aren't pollinating as much. Oh, wow. You know, and that's, hey. bees pollinate. Birds, I love bees. Anyways. Uh, I go first. Yeah, you go first. Man, imagine the impact of, say, I don't know, Adam Cole showing up in Money in the Bank as Ooh. the surprise eighth entrant, Ooh. scaling the ladder. Yeah. Claiming rib, that. With rib tape. Yes, with rib tape. Grabbing that briefcase, holding it high to end the match. Um, going over to SmackDown, teasing AJ Styles with a briefcase. Ha ha, I, can, I have Undisputed Air with me. I can cash this in on you anytime I want. And driving AJ Styles, absolutely insane. Um, you really like the driving somebody insane storyline, I, th- I think if you? you're doing long-term Money in the Bank booking, that's a necessary part of it. Yeah. you got to constantly tease cash in. Yeah. Drive people crazy. Drive them crazy. Because then, when they're when they're not operating in their full capacities, that's when they're prone to defeat. Hey, can we have just as an aside in bad or as rad wrestling? Can we have a best of the super elders? All right, that's good. Or just find all the old people that and they then put a, and make a belt. Yeah, yeah, that's Anyways, good. Continue. Um, I, I I'll go back to when uh, Kevin Owens showed up to answer John Cena's open challenge as the NXT champion. That bit and that feud really put, brought the esteem of NXT up to a whole nother level. Sure. It's the visibility of the brand up to a whole other level. Now, especially when NXT is so flush with talent, they really have the ability to take things to a whole different level. Um, and I think if you have Adam Cole show up, even if he cashes in and fails, just the opportunity that he shows up, gets that briefcase, is on the main roster now, um, and, and, and but still like say, I'm here, but I'm still NXT, mm-hmm. you know, and saying I'm going to be the first NXT superstar to wear the WWE title. That's huge. Yeah, it's big. That is massive. Um, and I think if they really want to elevate NXT to a brand on par roughly with Raw and SmackDown, that'd be a great way to do it and really interesting different storyline to, to pursue, which I don't think they've really done before anything, anything close to that. Um, so I think that'd be, the, in my option, the best bet. Um, the other option is just kind of like a kayfabe way to, 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 to justify someone getting brought up. Yeah, man. Call-ups are the best thing. That I'll segue into my argument. Call-ups are the coolest thing about NXT. That's not, totally not true. It's actually an anxiety attack these days because, oh, my God, my favorite guy is going to be booked wrong. Um, but, no, I think that'd be great. Number one, NXT can do no wrong. So they book their own money in the bank match. Where the money... Hold on, let me ask you this. Huh. So if someone scales that ladder at the NXT money in the big briefcase, grabs a beef, brief, briefcase, they instantly teleport to the main roster. <laughs> as the like, camera cuts away and to the, the crowd. And, it, and, it's an, and like no one's on the ladder anymore. Exactly. Okay, okay. That's exactly how it would work. Yeah, and then you get like a bunch of lame video packages on SmackDown um, for somebody's <laughs> arrival. They're like different. Uh, so Yes, that's what you do. No, I like. I, I really like that idea. I like the idea of they're doing their own money in the bank. Um, you know, it'd be for a contract. The, I think my main problem with it, to be honest, I kind of like your idea better. I kind of like the uh, having an NXT surprise entrant. I'll be honest with you. But um, I do like the idea. <laughs> a, a, a teleporting cash in is pretty neat too. One of the <laughs> that's pretty neat. One of the problems with the teleporting cash in. 
um, is whenever they do it, you'd probably know who was going to win before they did it. It'd be like, oh, well, he's probably going to win this. Well, because Alistair Black just dropped the title of Takeover ago, so <laughs> right, he's exactly. probably out the door. Exactly, so he's probably going to win that. So if they kept a way to keep it surprised, I'll put it as if they, if they did it in a way that was you know surprising, um, it could be a fun way to have a non-draft, uh, non-Raw after Mania, non-Smackdown after Mania way of calling somebody new up, have it a different time of the year, um, I think that could be a lot of fun. So I, I'd be into that. I'd be into either one. I think they're both great ideas. Uh, next up, we've got, is Brian Kelly a new Matt Chad? No, no, no. Oh, Brian Kelly's been around? I just I know the name Brian Kelly because I've got the chat trivia. Yeah, he's asked one question before, yeah. I believe. Okay. Hey, Stephen Larson. Uh, Brian Kelly here. Here's my silly little question for this week. Um, I believe it was Matt Jackson recently said that no one loves professional wrestling more than Dave Meltzer. That might be true. I personally think maybe that's Vince McMahon since he could have walked away a billionaire years and years ago. Uh, Larson, you take on the Dave Meltzer loves wrestling more than anybody else. And Steve, you take on the Vince McMahon loves wrestling more than anybody else. Have fun with that. Peace. Thank you, Brian Kelly. Thank you, Brian Kelly. Man, who loves wrestling more? Who goes? Oh, I go first. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you know why I love wrestling. Yeah, because it's the money. It's the money. Well, I I'm a billionaire. I think Vince just likes money. Yeah, man. So that's why Vince loves it. Well, look, man, Vince has been in the wrestling business for how long? Pretty, pretty much his whole life. And he still, he still, look, I guarantee you if Vince felt, I'll put it this way. I guarantee you Vince probably feels that Triple H and Stephanie are both perfectly suited to take over at any time. I don't think he thinks his uh, stock is going to fall. I don't think he thinks, um, well, actually, the stock probably would fall, it fell, fall if he if he took off because they've presented this as he's the guy keeping it together. Yeah, hey, he's so synonymous with WWE. Didn't yeah. it fall, like, briefly during his XFL? Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah. Um, however, I do think that he would probably think that things would be run fine once he's gone. Um, I honestly think he's still at Gorilla, and it might be a little bit of creative control, but you can call, uh, uh, you know, or being um, a, a, a control freak. Being control freak is just synonymous with having passion. That's not true. <laughs> not true. I think Vince loves wrestling more than anybody on this planet. Otherwise, he wouldn't be doing it anymore. You cannot do what he does as long as the hours that he keeps during the day without absolutely loving it. It's Vince McMahon. He absolutely loves wrestling more than Dave Meltzer, who sometimes honestly seems to hate wrestling. Well, WWE wrestling, at least. Um, uh, <clears throat> here's the thing about Vince. Here's why I think he loves most separate his family from that. Uh, one control. Yeah. Two money. Yeah. Three wrestling. Oh, okay. I think it's in that order. Money and wrestling might be tied. I think he loves control more than anything else, and that's why he doesn't want to give up WWE because he likes being in control of the thing that he created. Yeah, but, dude, you can't do that unless you love it. I know. That's why wrestling might be tied for and two. he does it more than anything. I understand. The, in, in wrestling anybody. might be tied for two, the thing he loves most. Um, whereas Meltzer, I'm sure he does well for himself. Yeah, man. I'm sure he... he, he we he, give him 20 bucks a month. Yeah, he earns a comfortable living. Yeah. But I, th I think more than anything, we, we, we credit Meltzer as being the foremost wrestling historian of our day, and that's because he loves it so much. Um, he doesn't have to engage with all those people on Twitter. Yeah, he does that for fun. Because he loves wrestling so much. No, I think he is, he's, uh, I don't know. Man. No, he loves wrestling that much that he's willing to engage any Twitter troll no, pretty much that's any not, Twitter That troll. has nothing to do with love. That has to do with wanting to just F with people. Maybe. Anyways. You don't learn that much about the history of wrestling around the globe unless you love it more than pretty much anything. Um, uh, and that's why I'll give Dave the edge because he seems to know basically everything about wrestling, not just here in the States, around the earth. He knows basically everything it seems like about Japanese wrestling, wrestling in Mexico, wrestling in any p place on this planet because he loves it. I imagine he spends pretty much... 90% of his hours not sleeping, watching, or writing about wrestling. That would be my guess. He seems to, or talking about it with Brian Alvarez on <laughs> Wrestling Observer Radio. Um, yeah, especially if you were listening to their uh, Backlash review. Uh, at that point, it sounded like that neither of them loved wrestling. Yeah. But at the same token, um, you can say, no, 
they 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 they're that negative about the show because they love wrestling so much that it breaks their heart to see such a god awful uh, piece of wrestling programming. Um, no, I think no. I I'll agree with. I think uh, Brian said Matt Jackson, who when th- he says yes, perhaps nobody on this planet loves wrestling more than Dave Meltzer. Except Vince McMahon. Nah. We have a couple of text uh, uh, questions here. The first one is from non-news fanatic Cerberus. Uh, and he says, the Roman experiment is still rolling on and no one, and I mean no one, is safe. Fan favorites, indie darlings, all must succumb to the big dog's unholy push. What would be the more heartbreaking sight? Roman beating Daniel Bryan or Roman beating Kenny Omega. Thanks, friendos. You go first. Oh, yeah. Well, Roman already beat Daniel Bryan at Fastlane 2015. On the line was a right to uh, main event WrestleMania against Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. So we've seen this before. It was very heartbreaking. It was, but not unexpected. We all knew Reigns was going to get that win and get that spot against Lesnar. Yeah. So it's, it's, I'm hard-pressed at this point to make the case that seeing Daniel Bryan eat a loss to Roman Reigns would be more heartbreaking because we've been there before. It was arguably... It was after Daniel Bryan returned from his injury. People were super excited to see him because it was just uh, like a month after he, he came back at the Royal Rumble and was dispatched a matter of minutes from that match. Um, uh, so I don't really know how I can make the case other than right now, Daniel Bryan, pretty fresh in his return to the ring from being out for three years. If he builds up uh, uh, some really good matches, which he's on the road to doing, if he's involved in a really interesting storyline that people get behind him even more, and then they feed him to Big Dog, yeah, um, it's gonna it's it's gonna break a lot of hearts. But we've seen it before. I think people at this point would just expect it to happen. Um, whereas your uh, your answer, uh, I think people may expect it, but since we haven't seen it, um, I th- I think it might be a scenario where people will start throwing like garbage mm-hmm. in the ring. It would it would speak to just how ha- oh <clears throat> if Roman Reigns beats Daniel Bryan again see back then we had no idea Daniel Bryan was going to be gone from wrestling yeah. for as long as he was yeah he's back now people love it people love him it's obvious that he is supremely over it's so obvious that Roman Reigns is the exact opposite of that if Roman Reigns were to break were to beat Daniel Bryan right now. It would be heartbreaking because it's obvious that the WWE still isn't listening to what their fans are really interested in. Yes. Um, if Kenny Omega made the jump, but it, it wouldn't be wholly unexpected either yes. because of how they book Roman. If Kenny Omega spent all this time in New Japan, we know the love that he has for the art of professional wrestling, for the storytelling, for the things you could do in the ring. And he comes over. Superman punch spear one two three that would be absolutely heartbreaking because it's a guy that we've grown to cherish I'll put it this way it's a guy that we've grown to see cherished by the company he works for by the people above him that care about the writing and the story and that care about what he cares about Kenny go out there and put on the best match tell the stories you want to tell in the WWE would be, hey, we're feeding you to Robert. Yeah. Welcome to WWE. Yeah. It'd be that. That would be the most heartbreaking thing because we've seen how well he's been treated in another place. And then he comes to WWE. And here's the thing about Kenny Omega. If he comes to WWE, it ain't going to be because of the payday, even though that'll be prob- probably pretty decent. Pretty decent. I mean, I know New Japan pays their top guys pretty damn good. Um, so WWE would have to plunk down some it's a good amount of money more. Yeah. yeah. Um, so he'd be getting a good payday, but I don't think for a second, for a second, that's going to be the reason why he shows up. It's because it's going to be because he has nothing left to do in new Japan. He wants a new challenge. He wants to see if he can tell his stories the way WWE tells their stories. Yeah. And if he comes in and immediately there's like, yeah, you're garbage. And here's Roman Reigns. He's going to eat you with some so crappy here, moves. Here's first, here's a feud against Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> yes. Keep you off TV for a little while. Yeah. Dark matches. Yeah. Yeah. Here, you're going to uh, have a three match series to Dolph. He's going to win but one by cheating. Right, exactly. And then we're going to feed you the reins for three matches in a row. And you're going to lose them all. Mm-hmm. And then uh, to and then you're going to uh, main event the kickoff show for a few months. Against Baron Corbin. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that would be truly heartbreaking yes. because we've seen 
we've seen him somewhere else. With Daniel Bryan, we've seen the ups and downs in WWE. Um, so I do think Kenny Omega would probably be the more heartbreaking thing, especially because it's been it, by the time he comes to WWE, and I think it's going to happen by the time he shows up in WWE, it'll have been so long that we've been anticipating this. So, yep, that'd be a bummer. Uh, next from the cat, Daryl Takahashi. He asked, Roman is known as the guy WWE wants to push, and Tetsuya Naito was known as the guy New Japan wanted to push. The question is, who would be more over if the two switched companies and pushed as the guy, Roman in New Japan with New, New Japan Creative, or Naito in WWE with WWE Creative? So he's talking about Stardust Genius Naito, not LIJ Naito, I believe. Okay, hold on a Because when he debuted, he was like, Super push, and the crowd he turned against was him. Was known as the guy New Japan wanted to push. The question is, who would be more over if the two switched companies and pushed as the guy? I mean, I guess ultimately, I would... I yeah, would, where do you get that he's talking about old Naito versus because that, now Because Naito. that was... Because right now, the, the product that we have now, or Naito we have now, is is after the, when he debuted because I know not a ton but a little bit about Naito's history in New Japan mm -hmm. when he debuted as under the gimmick as Stardust Genius mm -hmm. and that was the idea they were pushing him to the moon and the crowd felt that he was being pushed down their throats and turned against him mm -hmm. um, kind of culminating ultimately in the fans voting um, his title match against Okada not the main event mm. and that led to his 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 trip to Mexico L.I.J., all that stuff. Okay. That's the Naito narrative as I understand it. I'll go first. Um, Roman Reigns, Naito, that whole storyline ultimately worked out. He's the most popular guy in Japan right now. So I wouldn't take Naito out of New Japan and put him in WWE, assuming WWE Creative would handle things any better. Because, yeah, the, the start was rocky, but ultimately they found something that really worked. And by all indications, he sells a ton of merch in Japan. He's the most popular wrestler over, over there. And insanely popular here, too. Um, Roman, on the other hand, they don't know what the hell they're doing with this guy. No, they don't. They have no idea what they're doing. So imagine a, a, a wrestler the, like Roman who can work pretty effectively. He's athletic. Um, put him in uh, New Japan's creative, which isn't so reliant on promos and such. Um, give him a pretty simple character, which he can do, um, and just have him go out there and put on good matches and I think he would benefit from that because New Japan what they do best is they say this is your character these this is your story long term go out there and perform how you, you know the best you can and wrestlers who go out there and do that they will get it seems like they will have storylines uh, involved for them and I think that would benefit a, a Roman far more than sending Naito who yeah Rocky Start it's going in a pretty good direction right now don't, I, don't, I'm not, I have zero faith in WWE Creative that they could take Stardust Genius Naito and somehow give us something even close to LIJ Naito. Wouldn't happen. Um, I wouldn't really have much faith in... I, I Honestly, I'm not really sure I'd have much faith. I mean, I guess the answer is Roman. I don't really have much faith that Roman Reigns would go to New Japan and... I, think, I, don't, I don't know how much Roman Reigns really cares about wrestling. I think he cares about his job. I think he cares about WWE. But in New Japan, you have to really care and love wrestling yeah. for it to work. So if you just plunk him down there, I'm not sure he's going to want to do more moves than just Superman punch spear. I'm not sure he's going to want to care about that stuff. You need more dimensions as a wrestler if you're going to be in New Japan for you yeah. to be over and successful. Yeah. Naito, already, he, even if as Stardust Genius, I mean, you know, the, the, the ingredients are there. I think that's what you got to look at is are the ingredients there um, with Roman? I still don't know that they are. I mean, I think they are, but put in a, in a, in an atmosphere like new Japan. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I mean, I kind of see what you're saying, although I still kind of think that, yeah, I don't I mean, know. Ultimately I'm saying I don't, I don't know enough about Naito back then. My, my, my general gist is I have a lot more faith in new Japan creative in terms of developing wrestlers, developing characters and motivating stories based on character than WWE does. Yeah. We can agree with that. However, if Naito got plunked into WWE, he'd be plunked into a uh, stardust genius. He'd be plunked into NXT. Yeah. And I have plenty of faith in NXT to make the most of people until they get to the main roster and then creative there just screws it all up. Yeah, well, you know, in the meantime, he's good in NXT. All right. 
Thomas Fox is our final question for the day, and he says, with the way things are looking in regards to oh, to Neville, he will be a free agent soon. Is Hopefully. that true? We don't know that. We true. don't know that. Because they probably froze his contract. My question is, who will have a higher ceiling in their post-WWE career, Neville or Austin Aries? Too sweet for Steve, hearty handshake for Larson. Thanks, friendos. The answer is, of course, Neville. Uh, we kind of see Aries' ceiling right now. It's Impact Champion and Champion of a bunch of smaller promotions. Um, I love Austin Aries. I think he's great. Um, but, man, Neville out there in New Japan, that's money. That's so much money. That's instant Intercontinental Champion over there. That's what that is, or at least instant U.S. Champion. It's it's totally Neville, like by, by a country mile we've seen the austin aries ceiling and his champion pretty much everywhere he goes well it's, it's champion for people that want to put a belt on impact yeah. tv yeah yeah how many titles do they have now six how many of them matter ten they all matter man they all matter to their promotions to their promotions yeah yes. and fans of that promotion yeah um I mean, I don't know if Austin Aries was offered any sort of deal with New Japan. Maybe he, did. he wasn't. He wasn't? Do you he know did. that? Yeah, because he would have been there. You sure about that? <laughs> he would have gone. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if Austin, if Austin Aries had gone to New Japan, he would be heavily involved in at least the junior heavyweight division. And if not for the, the Will Ospreay storyline that's playing out now, he might be very well a contender to have that title as well. Um, we see right now, Austin Aries, wherever he goes, he wins a championship. That's a pretty decent ceiling to have. I like that you're arguing for the Impact Champion. That's good. That's good. I like that. Well, you chose Neville, so. Of course, because of course it's Neville, right? You agree with me, right? Yeah, I like Neville more, but. <laughs> look, I like Austin Aries a lot. Oh, a I do lot. too. I do too. I like him a lot. And in fact, look, man, I'm, start, I'm starting to get back into Impact because I'm going to start doing Impact reviews again. I kind of feel like Austin Aries have, have, should have one fewer title, namely the Impact title. Pentagon should still have that. <laughs> Well, that's the only title that he has that actually means anything. That's so rude. It's not. It's it so is not rude. True. What does he have? Defiant, defy. He's got one more, doesn't he? He's got a bunch. I don't I mean, know. That's what a pretty he's good got, ceiling man. to have to have like five championships. That's I not bad. Know, I know, but like I don't know. Yeah, you're right. It's good. Too many. Here's a, here's a problem with Neville. And it's I so worry gi- about. It's so gimmicky. It's oh, so I know. gimmicky. Here's a worry I have with Neville is that uh, WB, well, here's, I don't, I don't know exactly the structure of his contract, so this could be a moot point. WB says, all right, we'll let you go, but you have to serve out, you know, essentially you have a no, no compete for the, the length of the term left on your contract. So if he had a year left on his deal after they froze his contract, that means, granted, he'd get paid, he would have to sit at home for a year before he could wrestle again. That could be a bummer. I don't know if they would just say straight up, all right, you're cut 90 day no compete then you're on then you're free to do whatever or if they just say all right we're just gonna essentially not renew your deal but you have to I say home for a year. i think they're gonna do whatever's gonna screw them over mm-hmm. I, which would I be do. yeah we're gonna make you serve out the duration of your contract and just not resign you yeah i don't know when they can un when they, they're when it can be unfrozen i forget exactly how that stuff i don't works. know if there's i don't know if there's an end point to that i don't know I can't believe, I mean, yeah. You, do, but, you wouldn't yeah. think they'd be able to do it in perpetuity. Right. Legally, but I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, could they just pay him forever to do nothing? Maybe. Until he's if, too old to wrestle? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. That's a sad situation. It's a really sad situation. It's a situation bummer, man. Because I do, I think that he can go directly to, to Ring of Honor, New Japan, probably just New Japan, and do some. Be huge. And be absolutely huge. Yeah. I really do. I don't, I'm not sure. I mean, look, could Austin Aries go there and, and be as good a wrestler as anybody there probably yeah mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I believe that for mm-hmm. sure um i still don't think I'd, i think i don't think he'd be as successful as neville i just don't i think that his is a personality that is <sighs> whose personality do you think is closest to in new japan cody yeah cody right yeah cody's done pretty well for himself in new japan austin aries is kind of like the american marty Skrull, isn't he He's not quite as goofy. Right. Yeah. That's I'm why just, I think I'm Cody just trying I'm trying to analogy. find like a parallel a parallel of like somebody else that you can sort of look at. Like heel Austin Aries, I can see. I mean, he, Cody like Cody is more, you know, he kind of flaunts his money a bit more than I think Austin Aries would. Yeah, sure. But in terms of devious tactics, I think there's that's a comparable analogy in terms mm-hmm. of 
yeah, yeah, behavior, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think Austin Aries would have like him getting have a limousine in his video package and walk around in, in fur coats and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I don't think that'd be part of his gimmick over there. Austin, he'd be in the juniors though, right? Well, maybe, probably. probably At least to start, yeah. 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 Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I just get what we saw from Neville was so special. I know that last year. I know it was so special. I know that to see that in the in the just all over the indie ranks in a New Japan. I, I do think huge. Neville has more of an upside as an in ring competitor. I think Neville, regardless where he goes, will see roughly the same thing as what we saw in WWE. You know, Austin Aries has put on good matches in WWE, but I think that's just how he wrestles, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, he might, you know, the pace might be a little different or he might bust out a couple extra moves. Oh, no, that, that's, that's my main thing is that, man. Whereas Neville is, is the tip of the iceberg. You see stuff you yeah, do to right. PWG I and know. it was insane. I know, so. exactly. Man, that freaking ceiling's got to be yeah, huge. Huge. Imagine Neville versus Will Ospreay. I think my point about all the belts is that Neville could would easily be the same type of name to oh. be able to pull that off. Oh, yeah. You know? Um, so, yeah. But no, I like Austin Aries. I really like him. I do. I think he's great as Impact Champion. I'm gonna. I've, I've started watching Impact again, Larson. Why don't you start too and do Impact? Well, they should have kept the, that belt on Pentagon. Maybe I would have. On our Friday show, can I start just doing my solo reviews there? Like, well, well we kind of do that. It's called non news. Well, so, whoa, whoa, wow. We see how you really feel about things. Anyways, that's it for Matt Chat. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. Bye.